Hey, what's up guys? So I have been taking creatine for over 13 years now. Um, and so in this video, I wanted to kind of walk through all of the research that has convinced me to take it this long. So let's dive right in. Hey guys, my name is Zach and welcome to Nutrition Library where we take an evidence-based approach to supplementation and nutrition. If you haven't already, do me a huge favor and hit the red subscribe button that's below this video so you can stay up to date with all of our future content. Thank you so much. All right, so in this video specifically, we're going to be covering three main things. The first is um, pretty much just what creatine is. And then the second thing I want to talk about is uh, how creatine interacts in the body. And then the third thing we're going to talk about, which is going to take up the majority of of this video is the two primary uh, benefits that you can expect from supplementing with creatine. Now, creatine specifically is a peptide uh, molecule that is produced by most animals um, and is found in relatively high amounts in meat products. Now, most people are familiar with the concept of amino acids and protein and the fact that amino acids make up the foundation of proteins, but what a lot of folks don't realize is that there is kind of actually a intermediary between amino acids and proteins and those molecules are actually known as peptides and creatine kind of fits into this um, subcategory of organic compounds. Now in the human body creatine has the role of storing another molecule known as phosphate um, and stores phosphate in the body in a form known as creatine phosphate or phosphocreatine. Now phosphate has a lot of different roles within the context of the human body however However, one of its primary roles is to be donated to the molecule uh, adenosine diphosphate in order to create uh, the more well-known molecule adenosine triphosphate, otherwise known as ATP. And so creatine comes in in that it's able to store phosphate in the body that can then be uh, donated to ADP and able to form more rapidly um, ATP during periods of high energy demand. So essentially, the more creatine you have in the body, the more creatine phosphate you have and the more phosphate is stored and is able to be donated to ADP in order to create ATP more rapidly. Now with that being said, let's go ahead and jump into the two primary health benefits um, from supplementing with creatine. Um, and the first one we're going to talk about today is creatine's benefit to athletic performance. Now specifically, creatine has been shown to increase power output by up to 45% uh, over control and has also been shown to to increase anaerobic running capacity, reduce exercise fatigue and increase endurance, as well as improve VO2 max. Now, in order to fully comprehend how creatine improves athletic performance, it is gonna help us to understand the three major metabolic pathways in the body. Now, the first metabolic pathway I wanna talk about today is the aerobic uh, metabolic pathway. Now, the aerobic pathway is typically what's considered kind of like cardio, and so um, this energy pathway can utilize both carbs and lipids as an energy substrate. And the best way to remember this is that aerobic essentially means in the presence of oxygen. And so um, aerobic activity is typically activity that's lower in intensity and allows your body to actually get enough oxygen uh, to the muscle cells in order to perform that uh, specific task. And these would include tasks or activities such as walking or hiking, or depending on your um, endurance and activity level, it could possibly even include things like long distance running, but typically uh, long distance running utilizes the uh, second metabolic pathway, which is the anaerobic pathway. Now, the anaerobic pathway in contrast to the aerobic pathway is usually used for activities that are moderately high in intensity and is technically performed without the presence of oxygen. Now, this metabolic pathway exclusively utilizes carbohydrates as opposed to the aerobic system which um, is able to use carbohydrates and lipids and is utilized by activities that are moderate in intensity level um, and typically includes activities that are roughly between 30 seconds to three minutes in duration. Now, activities that usually fall within the anaerobic metabolic pathway include uh, things like high repetition weightlifting as well as uh, moderately intense running um, somewhere between 200 to 400 to even 
than 800 meters. Now, the third metabolic pathway that I want to talk about, which is where creatine comes in, is known as the phosphagen system. Now, the phosphagen system is somewhat independent of the aerobic and anaerobic system in that it does not utilize carbohydrates or lipids as a primary energy substrate and is actually sometimes known as the creatine phosphate system because it utilizes creatine in order to create um, ATP at a very high level. Now, the creatine phosphate system is typically utilized for um, extremely intense and powerful movements anywhere between 1 to 30 seconds and um, is typically utilized by people that are doing things like super short duration sprints um, or kind of like Olympic powerlifting. Now, because creatine is utilized within the, uh, the context of this metabolic pathway in order to create ATP, which is the primary energy source for most activities within the context of the human body, theoretically speaking, the more creatine you have stored in your body, the better your body is able to utilize this metabolic pathway in order to um, increase power output uh, within the context of that very specific narrow window um, of activities. Now, there isn't a ton of research to indicate that creatine can actually help um, improve the kind of those higher endurance activities. However, uh, the evidence is clear from hundreds of studies that creatine is extremely effective and literally the most effective supplement that you can take in order to improve movements and activities that utilize this specific phosphagen energy pathway. Now, the second health benefit that I want to touch on real quick is uh, creatine's ability to um, not just improve athletic performance, but to also improve um, lean mass and muscle mass. Now, this study in particular, um, which is actually a meta-analysis of over 100 studies, concluded that creatine can reliably increase lean mass to a, um, to a fairly modest degree. Now, the first way that creatine is able to improve lean mass is, as we've previously discussed, um, it's able to improve work capacity. Now, a lot of folks like to complicate the process of building muscle mass. However, it is super simple. Uh, there's really three things that you need in order to improve muscle mass uh, to a significant degree, and that is one, a progressive increase in workload, uh, two, a progressive increase in protein, and three, a progressive increase in calorie intake. Now, the reason I bring this up is that when you do have your diet, your protein, and your calorie intake controlled for, uh, really the only way to increase muscle mass is to increase workload, and creatine does a fantastic job at doing this. Now, the second way that creatine has been shown to improve uh, muscle mass and lean mass is that it also helps to increase muscle hydration. Now, creatine is technically um, kind of like on a biochemical level, a a hydrophilic molecule, which means that it loves water and water loves it. Um, and so my point in bringing that up is that when you are able to saturate the muscles with creatine, um, it doesn't just pull creatine into the muscle cells, but it also pulls water into the muscle cells. And so by doing this, it inherently increases the weight of the muscle tissue, but it also um, improves the hydration status of the muscle in order to kind of uh, secondarily increase workload, which in and of itself self also uh, increases muscle mass. Now, the third way that creatine increases muscle mass is by um, helping to actually increase glycogen storages. Now, glycogen is the primary kind of uh, storage unit of carbohydrate within the body. Um, it's how your body stores carbohydrates primarily in the muscle and liver tissue. And the thing about glycogen is that it also loves water and tends to hold on to water. And so when you increase glycogen, glycogen storages within the muscle tissue. It also increases the presence of water in the muscle tissue, which again, secondarily is going to increase the weight of that tissue as well. Now, these are the two primary benefits that you can expect from uh, supplementing with creatine. There are a host of other benefits that I'm actually going to be covering in a later video, but with everything considered, creatine does seem to be one of the most well-researched compounds in existence, um, as well as one of the safest compounds in existence. And so I am a huge fan of creatine and have been for over 13 years now. And so because of the fact that it is so effective, um, so studied, and so cheap, it's one of those supplements that I kind of recommend that most people at least try, especially if you're in uh, the athletic space and are trying to improve athletic performance to any degree. But other than that, guys, if you have any questions, leave a comment down below and I will see you guys next time. Thank you so much.